And good morning, everyone, and welcome back. I'm Jennifer Burton, one half of the Remote Pathways podcast. So pleased to be here with my co-host, Michelle Mullins, for our June 4th, 2020 call. Welcome to you, Michelle. How are you doing? Oh, doing fabulous on this bright and early morning because we have our special guest, Teresa, with us today. So much joy to be sprinkled around this morning. Absolutely. And a big warm welcome to you, Teresa McCloy. We got to meet with Teresa a couple of weeks ago, more than a couple of weeks ago, maybe about a month ago, mm -hmm. to talk about the Enneagram. And Teresa, I want to give you just a minute to introduce yourself. What would you like our listeners to know about you and this topic of the Enneagram as we get started? Well, thank you. It's so good to be here. It's it's super early for me, so it's 6 a.m. So, but, thank you uh, for being here. But you know, it's well. Actually, I have a 7 a.m. every Thursday meeting, so it's great. So no problem at all. But uh, it's great to be with you all. It was so fun to be on the podcast. Uh, I use the tool of the Enneagram and the work that I do as an executive coach. So working with my clients and actually through a process that I created called the Real Life Process. The Enneagram becomes kind of that foundational piece of if we know ourselves well, if we understand, you know, kind of our wiring, our personality, how we're put together, then we can live our best real life and really do our best real work. But it comes with that foundation of that self-awareness and knowing and the desire to be self-aware, right? So I love doing that work um, and love helping others facilitate that work, which is something new that I just launched out this past month. So I'm excited about that. Well, we're looking forward to learning more. And Teresa is just a gem. I think you'll really enjoy our episode with her. It's episode 14 of the Remote Pathways podcast. It just released yesterday. So definitely check on over to your favorite podcast player. And today we get to have this extended conversation. So in true RPP, as we like to call ourselves, Remote Pathways podcast, we have a quick intro exercise to bring you into the room, and I'm going to turn it over to Michelle. Michelle, would you like to take us into this exercise, which we're terming finding your remote rhythm? Yes. Okay. So um, as we all know, in the remote space, it can be challenging to find a healthy rhythm, uh, the rhythm of life, which Teresa expanded upon in our last podcast that released yesterday. So I thought it was fitting if we just came together and kind of looked at these pictures and considered where you are today um, in your remote rhythm, because I've noticed it's changed day to day for me um, and I'll kick things off and perhaps we can just pass the baton around the virtual table here. Um, I will say yesterday I had more of a pothole day <laughs> in my remote rhythm. I was um, just out of sync, but this morning I'm finding myself in that canoe on the still waters. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at today. How about you, Jen? Ooh, well, I was thinking the still waters of the canoe because that's usually what I look out to at this time of year, albeit this year not. But I actually think I'm going to take the surfboard because in recent months, there's been a tsunami of need for remote workers, remote businesses, and remote teams to have better conversations. And just as soon as I wrap up one set of conversations with a team or an organization, along comes another organization with some great work and some great people. So I'm just riding the waves and, you know, it could be like the rip curl here. It could look like a lot of different things but I've got my trusty surfboard. And um, one thing that I'm really noticing about remote rhythm is uh, trying to inject fun along with the, uh, you know, the reality and the levity of life, but just making sure that wherever we have influence to really make the most of the conversations we're having and uh, to making sure that sometimes it's a bit risky, but that we're going into that area of risk to make sure that we have the best relationships. And I think that ties back to our, episode 13, our trust and relationships episode in the remote space, which of course is such an important topic for all of us right now, wherever we are in the world. So with that, I'm going to pass over if I might to you, Teresa, what's your remote rhythm right now? Well, I love this exercise. You know, I do. So uh, <laughs> I love the visual because I'm a visual learner in a lot of ways. And so 
I, the w long and winding road, I really want to break out in song right now, but we won't. But the long, <laughs> yeah. long <laughs> oh, it's early for that. The long and winding road uh, up in the corner there um, really kind of represents um, the journey that I feel like I've been on, you know, for, and really don't know where it's going to lead to totally. So that's part of the fun, part of the risk part of the adventure is I can't really see, you know, off in the horizon exactly where it's going to end up. Um, and I think for many of us through the last few months that we've walked in, there's been a lot of shifts and change. There's been a lot of, oh, well, that wasn't exactly what I had planned for this year. So maybe I need to pivot and change. And um, I was looking at that visual too and finding it interesting. You see the road go down and you really don't know where it goes down there. <laughs> and then you really, you know, like, is it really steep and, and deep right there or did it just come right back up? And that's kind of the way uh, I felt in the last couple of months is like, well, I'm not really sure how far this is going, but you know, we're going to get on the road and we're going to drive. And I love a good winding path too. So that's just the one that popped out to me. I really like the canoe though, because I always like a peaceful morning and a good cup of coffee. So that caught my eye, but I'm going to go with the winding road. So I'm going to pass over to Kathy, if she's able to share with us. Over to you, Kathy Vaughn. Hi, how are you? Good uh, to have you here. What are you picking uh, today, I, Kathy? I'm stuck between... Go ahead. I'm stuck between the long and winding road and the road to nowhere. <laughs> I, 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 um, I don't know which one I'm feeling. I'm, I'm vacillating between both and mostly from some very frustrating feedback on people's behaviors on calls, um, or people are diminishing the call because of something that someone else did and not really, not knowing what went wrong with Zoom on the participants end where I couldn't like Put their video off um, or someone couldn't ask a question yet they were a panelist um, and I'm a little frustrated so I'm, 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 I'm going in and out but I'm also I feel like some of this is I, I feel like some of this behavior the critique is coming from people who will complain no matter what uh, yeah and again back to what can we influence and how do we re how do we keep reframing and keep ourselves moving as well Thanks for sharing that, Kathy. Okay, so why don't we go to Jennifer G, if she's able to put in a few cents here. If Jennifer G, I know she's on the move this morning. I am, sorry, it took me a minute to get my camera back up. Um, <laughs> so let's see, I am really resonating with the surfboard. Um, I am not a surfer, but from what I understand, um, surfers will travel long, long distances just to catch that perfect wave. And it kind of feels like the entrepreneurial road I've been on. Um, you know, I've felt it in my heart. It's like the ocean has been calling me to this work. And um, there's been a lot of flat days with no waves and, um, and some where the waves were just way too big. But right now, in this season, um, it feels like I caught a perfect wave, and I'm riding it, so it feels really good. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's a good, good time to be, to be a surfer, <laughs> an entrepreneurial surfer. So that's, uh, awesome. that's where I am this morning. Thanks. I'll pass it to Melissa. Thanks, Jennifer. Welcome to you, Melissa. Great to have you here today. What are you picking today, Melissa? Oh, hello, everyone. Hello. Um, I just want to say, Teresa, it is uh, five o'clock where I am. So I beat you <laughs> with early morning. <laughs> yes. I went in and the power was out this morning. And I thought, how am I going to have my coffee before I get on this call? But anyway, <laughs> in Costa Rica, you get a lot of those outages. But um, I, I am, so as I'm looking at these, I mean, they the one that I don't like is the cloudy one. Sometimes we, we've been having some cloudy days here, but, um, and when those days come along, I just think this too shall pass, you know, because, and you know, you just kind of try to change, I try to change my mindset. So I do get a few of those, but um, 
I probably resonate most with this road over to the, the long and windy road over here. It's, it, to me, it, it's even appealing because you can see in some parts and I can see the, I can see things. And also um, opportunities have opened to me as a realtor here in Costa Rica, as a property specialist, because people want to be here now. It's just total pivot as, as uh, I'm forced to go more online and so I want to go more into those surfing waters. I'm gaining my courage <laughs> and I want to ride that wave like Jennifer G is doing. Um, so I, I feel like I'm kind of between those two. And then I have those beautiful canoe days as well here because it is beautiful. Fantastic. Well, again, so great to have everyone here. I think we've found our own groove. And just a reminder, every time we like to go back to the roadmap, and just a reminder, we're stepping into the final month of Q2, hard to believe it. The theme for this sort of quarters uh, area is all about experimentation. So what are you experimenting with? What's working? And maybe what's not? And if it's not working, what shifts are needed or what reframe is possible? In a few weeks, we'll step into Q3, hard to believe. Um, I know in my work and Michelle's work, we're doing a lot of sort of mid-year planning work that's on the horizon. So in our July call, we'll be focusing on motivation, a bit of a different shift from experimentation. So let's discuss today's topic because I think this is one that probably is of great interest to many. Last call, just a reminder, if you weren't here with us live two weeks ago, we talked about trust and connection. That links into episode 13. And today, this is where we bring in Teresa's voice, so the Enneagram. And um, Michelle had shared with us this fantastic quote from Ian Morgan Cron, the Enneagram is a tool that awakens our compassion so that people just as they are not people we wish they would be uh, or they would become so our lives would become easier. And I think, this is such a great quote to set us off. And we're going to actually pass over to you, Teresa, to walk us through a little bit about your harmony triad and maybe to just give us some sound bites around the Enneagram and, and whatever you'd like to share with us today. Sure. Well, um, if you're not familiar with the Enneagram, uh, it is a tool of self-discovery, both psychological and spiritual tool. And it's really represented uh, as the diagram that they have here, at least this is kind of the way we represent it at the real life process with, and you see these visuals, there's actually nine different types or styles that we can identify with around uh, the circle of the Enneagram. And Enneagram meaning nine and gram meaning drawing. So the word sounds this big and, you know, fancy word, but it's really broken down pretty simply. But uh, yet it's a very complex tool that we can use to learn more about ourselves. And I love the quote that you chose there, Michelle, because one of the things that I find that people, as we do our own kind of self-awareness, self-discovery work, many times we end up really finding empathy for others through that work because the more that we know about self the more than we have that compassion or that empathy for others and understand um, kind of some of their motivations and their drives whether that be in our personal relationships or our work relationships and when we think about remote work and we're doing lots of that now right <laughs> when we think about remote work um, that becomes even more important because um, that knowing of self and then that understanding that we can give across these virtual spaces, these remote spaces becomes so, so vitally important. So when we look at the Enneagram and you, you see these three even visuals, remember I'm a visual learner, so I love this. Some of the types or styles in the Enneagram fall in what we call a body intelligence space, right? Some fall in this heart intelligence space and some fall in this head. So IQ, EQ, and GQ is what I call it, not the magazine, but uh, gut intelligence. And so most of us come from one of those three places and we have that hard kind of, I'm a heart, heart type, and some people come from the head center and some people come from that body center. But what we love about the harmony model is, yes, we have a home space, a home intelligence center 
and even break it down into one of the numbers in that three space, but we actually are connected also to the other two. And many times it's waking up those other two centers that we haven't done yet, right? And, and we, we haven't accessed is the word that we often use. So I'm a heart type. So I naturally will, will go from the heart, but I have to remember to wake up my head and to wake up my body. And to be honest, one of those is usually really, really asleep, for lack of a better word. So I found uh, through my discovery that my body center, that gut intelligence, I had it there, but I wasn't recognizing it in a positive way. Many times it showed up in a negative way. And so, you know, sometimes, you know, my body was just really resistant to things or I'd have a lot of stress, a lot of tension, um, maybe even some stomach issues and some different things. And, I'm, and I've learned that that's my body telling me something, you know, that's my body trying to say, hey, I need your attention here. You know, I'm trying to tell you something. So, so knowing and just really paying attention, we can do a lot of this just instinctually, right? That's that body knowing, just paying attention. And so I have a little exercise real quickly, Jennifer, if you would uh, let me share my screen. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to stop my share and we'll see if you can do your share. Or I'll give you host control. Sure. So sure, you should just sure. see the little share screen button on the bottom. Yep. And so if host it's not, table, okay, so you know what? I'm going to give you host control right now and you are going to see my screen. So you can now definitely share your screen there. Teresa. Okay. Uh, perfect. So, so this is just a little exercise that I use a lot called the now exercise. And it's really simple. Uh, I love to be very, very present in the moment. And when we're working remotely, it, it is important that we show up very present, right? And very in the moment. And so this now exercise in OW, notice your reaction. Like what happens when technology doesn't work? What happens when, um, you know, uh, all of a sudden, uh, you know, somebody doesn't show up on time at an appointment or, you know, all the different things that we run into throughout the day. So just notice it and be like, okay, something shifted in me. I feel it in my heart. I feel it in my head. I'm spinning or I feel it in my body and tension. So that's the end. Notice the second part is open up to all three centers. What's my head telling me about this? What's the information that's really factual and I know? You know, what, what knowledge do I have? What information do I need to access right now? What is my body reaction? How can I slow that down? Many times, you know, through our breath, through standing up, through movement, you know, when we, we work remotely too, I think many times we're stuck in the same, same position, same room, same place all the time. One of the best investments I made in the last couple of months was a stand-up desk just to get my body again in more motion. And then, you know, what is your heart? What's your feelings saying? You know, are they really your feelings or are they own, you owning someone else's? You know, are you taking on someone else's feelings right now? So opening up to all three centers. And then from that, give a whole self response, not a reactive response from your center. So, you know, depending on your head, your heart, or your gut, uh, we're driven by different needs. Uh, the head spaces are driven by, and we talked about this on the podcast, uh, driven by some fear and anxiety and that need to know information, have all the details, have all the ducks in a row, all three types for different reasons. The gut center is driven more by that instinctual and they respond at that gut level. It can go clear to resentment and anger when it gets at it, it's worst. And our heart centers are driven by a need for approval. So when you're checking in with those three centers, you're also going, ah, am I fearful? Am I needing approval right now? Am I really just kind of ticked off about this right now? And I need to notice that. And then we respond from all three centers. And that's giving our whole best self, um, you know, that's really, moving in what I call full circle awareness, right? And we can do that in 30 seconds, or we can, it might be something we have to do over a three hour period or even over a three day period. But just that here I am right now, 
and I want to be present to the moment and then I want to know my reaction and we can use the tool of the Enneagram to do that type of work. So I just thought that little now exercise might be something, you know, that might be helpful. And I don't think we talked about that on the podcast too much. So I thought that might be a little good little exercise add on. I love that. How about you, Michelle? Like Michelle was like, we've got to bring Teresa (laughs) to the podcast. And I'm like, yeah, I want to learn more about the Enneagram. So Michelle, like, let's bring your voice in here. What do you want to, what do you want to That was beautiful. Again, so I was probably my seven kicking in. I'm connecting to a lot of stuff Jennifer G shares. You know, I feel like there's a lot of understanding that's similar. Um, and I mean, that quote I pulled from Teresa's website. So I love, I did that intentionally because that's your heart. I think Mm -hmm. you can see it and hear it in everything. This is phenomenal. I absolutely love it. I do have a follow-up. Do you find that you do this every morning? Is this part of your routine or ritual, Teresa, that you go into this space or just when the moment happens? Actually, I really love to have people access it. You know, it can be part of what I call, you know, that daily practice things we do with meditation and mantras, prayers, whatever that mm-hmm. is for you. So it, it definitely can come in in that place. It's kind of a review of, but really for me, the now is about, I'm right here in the moment. I want to, I want to, okay. I want to work through this in a whole self response way. Um, you know, every little thing, the interruption that comes and you're not expecting it. Why am I upset about that interruption? You know, why, you know, what's going on with me is, you know, and so just checking in with all three centers, depending on what your home center is and even your home type, you mentioned you're a seven. So, you know, uh, you're going to respond differently and you may start there or you may start with your four, Michelle, which is that sometimes invitation to your heart space, right? And you go, oh, you know, because this 741 triad that you've got going on. So uh, and I, we talked about that on the Enneagram or on the podcast that we're connected to all three centers and that waking up and going, oh, gosh, I hadn't even thought about accessing my heart in this response. Yes. Or I hadn't even thought about, uh, yeah, I am holding some resentment there towards this person or towards this activity mm-hmm. or towards this work that I need to do. Like I'm resisting doing it. Why is that? So that's mm-hmm. how you can use it throughout the day. So I hear compassion and curiosity. You're holding <laughs> both in that space of exploration in the now moment. And, and again, and I would love to bring the rest of the voices and hear what you're hearing. Um, but one more thing, just like you emphasized, when we have this understanding for ourselves and we know we know how to tune in, then it frees us to listen to the voices around us and the other people that are in our lives. Maybe they're having a now moment. So if you have this awareness, you can ask that question. You know, mm-hmm. I love imagine like, ooh, they need that heart. Yeah, so that's beautiful. But what do you think, Jennifer? I would love to bring in the other voices of the room. How, what are you hearing yeah. from what Teresa is sharing? Well, as a newer person to the Enneagram, I guess my first question, so I'm a, I'm a body, I'm an eight, right? And, and this was something I learned. It was, you know, there's the eight, but there's also the head of me going, I don't know what my type is. Where do I go? So what would, where would people go if they've never heard of the Enneagram? Teresa, I think there's a very practical question of like, how can I learn more about this? What would you recommend in terms of a learning next? Or where well, to go? If, the, if you're to the place of really wanting to just discover, you know, what, what is my type? What is my style? What is my home base? You know, definitely check out our website at therealliferocess.com and you can find some tools there. There's a free guide actually right on the home page where you can download that and, and read about all of nine of the styles or the types and just really through reading you can really go, oh, yeah, that one's me, like, no doubt. Of course, we have an online profile that you can take as well, and lots of different places that you can do that. So it's a tool that you can dive into as quickly as you want to, or as slowly as you want to as well. And, you know, there's lots of resources out there, but yeah, definitely check out our website and get that free typing guide might be a good place for you to jump in and start. And thanks for sharing with us, Jennifer, that you are an eight. Uh, on the Enneagram. So Jennifer brings power to the world. Michelle brings joy and enthusiasm to the world. My type three brings effective and efficiency to the world. They all have this gift that we bring into humanity. 
and, and what was so fun, and I want to just put the plug for that episode that we recorded about a month ago. Like it, it's a very dynamic conversation that the three of us had because we're different. We're all different. Yeah. And so listen in because part of, I think the, the joy, the challenge, the, uh, the moment that we're in is like, how do we effectively harness everyone's great talents? How do we really leverage all that we bring as unique individuals? And that can, can take some real learning in terms of how we work effectively. So we want to bring your voices in, Kathy, Jennifer G, Melissa, we've got you on the line. Maybe you have a question. We've got about five more minutes left of our call, but maybe you have a question for Teresa or an insight that you've had from this call. Because I love, Teresa, how you took the now and then also helped us frame out. I know, Kathy, you came to the call with sort of a very practical um, focus for yourself and perhaps found some ideas around new approaches. But what, what questions does Jennifer G, Melissa, or Kathy have? And Jennifer G, looks like you're unmuted. So is there mm -hmm. a question from you? Uh, well, I just wanted to say, you know, thank you, Teresa. I love that, that model. That's really fun. And, you know, like Michelle said, it, it resonates with a lot that we're doing. Um, but you might know Michelle and I are our business partners. And um, working together, we're both sevens. So um, we have a ton of fun, as you can imagine. We, uh, we laugh, you know, we cry. It, it's great. Uh, but any, I'm curious, any suggestions for, um, you know, working with others that maybe have like the same type or about that working That's a piece? Great, that's a great question, Jennifer. And right. And you're probably drawn to each other because you do have that same energy and that same understanding so you know knowing that the seven and the four and the one are kind of your harmony dynamic um i always encourage you once we know our kind of home base where we hang out and live go learn as much as you can through books through readings about the one and the four you know mm. so how do you all access your one within your business? So the one is going to give you that organization because a one brings goodness. So that one is always looking for systems and processes and organization. And so there may be times that you're in a conversation together and you go, you know what? We need a little more one right now. <laughs> like we need to really get some stuff done. And yeah. so, uh, and, and there's a, a positive or an authentic and an adaptive side of each of the styles. Sometimes you may both get caught to in the perfectionism of the one mm. and not end up putting out, you know, the product or the service or whatever, because, well, it's not quite done yet. It needs to be tweaked a little bit more or one of the other of you may be stuck in that. So I love the friendship and the business partnership and how you can help each other come to the, what we call many times the high side of your number and go, you know what? Uh, done is better than perfect. Like, right. let's put it out there and uh, not get caught in the perfectionism of, um, of that one space. So just accessing all three as you work together in your business. Oh, wow. That is so, I mean, my Michelle, I'm sure light bulbs were going off for you as well. <laughs> um, so that's, that's great. Thank you. And, and great insight into how you can help people, um, even like partnerships like this with that wisdom that you have around just how we're naturally wired through the Enneagram. So thank you. Yeah, great question, Jennifer. All right, we have one time for one more quick question. Kathy, Melissa, anything you'd love to ask Teresa? Hello, everyone. Again, um, I would just love to say that this is, I love your um, acronym now, because it's really easy to remember. And um, I took the Enneagram quickly with a little a course that um, Jennifer and Michelle were doing. And I came out as a nine, but it was a, it was a pretty simple and we didn't, I didn't explore it more, but I understood it to be more of a spiritual type by what I read. Is that correct? Um, it has both a psychological and a spiritual side to it because of the history of the tool itself. Brene Brown, and I want to throw this out there. I don't know if y'all are Brene Brown people or like her work. Love but it. She recently, two episodes ago, did a podcast on the Enneagram and had one of my good friends on. His name is Christopher Hewarts. And if you're looking for some of the background and the backstory of the Enneagram, that's a great podcast to kind of listen to, to get that backstory. And I love what Brene says on the podcast is the Enneagram is messy. 
And she goes, I don't trust anything if it's not messy. So she goes, I love things that are messy. And so the Enneagram as a tool, Melissa, really is a messy tool. It has some history in some spiritual places and some psychological places. But I love how Brene says it. If it's not messy, then it's really not the depth of a tool that I want to use. So Brene Brown has really uh, been gotten into the Enneagram and really sees it as a great tool to use in in those uh, messy places. So it does have a lot of spiritual background, but it's a marriage kind of of both things because we are both a spiritual and a physical being. And so I love how the Enneagram introduces. And I'm loving that you're in Costa Rica and that you're a realtor because it's one of my places I want to go. So, uh, Well, welcome. <laughs> Melissa will open up her door for you. <laughs> Absolutely. We're all going to be doing a retreat together. So you're all invited. Oh. The border's open. Oh, <laughs> Yeah. Well, you guys have heard so much just joy here today and how we wake up our day together. And I just want to encourage you to reach out to Teresa. You can find her at her website. And also she's featured on our guest page with a quick access to her website and that typing guide. So much. Uh, Teresa, thank you so much. You just, you showed up fully now in the moment and we felt your heart. Thank you for investing in us and devoting your time to remote professionals around the world for such a time as this. Very important work you're doing. So thank you for, thank you for gifting us that. Thank you. It's been a joy to be with you this past month in a couple of different ways. So <laughs> fun. Well, Jennifer. as always, we're going to continue the conversation. We'll see, Teresa, if we can give you, I get you to give me host control back. If oh, little Zoom tip, we're going to learn Zoom. Another thing is Zoom. So yeah. over my window, where you see my little window, upper right corner, oh. if you hover, you'll see a little button, blue button. Click on that. I am now host. We're going to wrap up with some additional things. And again, a big thank you, Teresa. Like, this is great. We could obviously spend hours talking about this. You'll be able to head on over. So be sure to listen into episode 14, get that guide. This week as well, we are continuing our journey into the realm of remote teams. And that's going to be our focus for mid June. So we are on week 22 at the blog, remotepathways.com. At the blog, you can always download the one pager for the week. And certainly our conversation sparker this week is what communication skills need attention? Mm -hmm. Everything gets magnified in the remote space. So are you needing this week to listen more, to pause more, create more silence, or ask better questions? That's the inquiry we'd love to lead you, leave you with. What communication skills need attention? And Michelle picked out this week's quote. So Michelle, do you want to take us through our tip and our quote of the week? Yeah, learning to collaborate is part of equipping yourself for effectiveness, problem solving, innovation, and lifelong learning in an ever-changing networked economy. So. Mm. And that is Don Tapscott. So if you have not read his writing, definitely now is the time. We are going to be pivoting in the next two weeks to remote team effectiveness, a topic very near and dear to my heart and a growing dear to Michelle's heart. We'll be looking mid-month at what helped teams thrive in the remote and virtual space. And very much, we'd like to invite you back two weeks today. I believe that is June, what is it? June the 17th? 18th. Yeah, the 18th. June, Thursday, Thursday, June 18th, our mid-month calls, a reminder, give you an extra 30 minutes to sleep in around. So we will kick off at 7.30 mid-month. And Michelle has an upcoming event. Yours is, Michelle? I'm finding, it's with Jennifer G, finding calm and clarity in the midst of chaos. And to keep you calm, I'm going to keep that short and sweet because I want to be respectful of your time. And passing back to you, Jen. All right. And of course, I'm continuing with my remote team days where I get to meet, spend a day or even more with remote teams. We do some team coaching, team development, strengths work, and we can also do Enneagram types, DISC, a whole bunch of different things. I'm also continuing this month with the Virtual Facilitation Essentials, a remote or virtual train the trainer to help people really navigate Zoom even more efficiently. I think everyone thinks they know how to use Zoom. 
but there are definitely more bells and whistles behind it. So with that, we look forward to having you back here on Zoom with us on Thursday, June 18th, 7.30 a.m., when we will be looking at the landscape of team effectiveness. And a big thank you, Teresa. Any closing words as we go to wrap up our call today? No, I just, I love, I'm so intrigued. You see me like leaning in and reading everything. <laughs> I'm like, I'm just so intrigued. So thank you so much for, you know, partnering with me and let me partner with you this past month. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we look forward to continuing the conversation because we know in the remote space, it's never a one-off. It's a, until we meet again, be well, <laughs> you know where to find us. And a big thank you. And Michelle, as always, over to you for last words. Yeah, just have a great day. May those waters be still or travel those winding roads and um, stay in the game until you've passed those potholes and those cloudy days. There's sunshine on the other side. And thank you for sharing this remote space with us. Bye, everyone. Thanks. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Bye -bye. everyone. Have a great week. See you have soon. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Buenas no buenos dias. <laughs> <laughs> Adiós. Hasta luego. Hasta luego.